today we're talking about stalkers who will stop at nothing to get close to their target. Now, my next guest, Danielle, is a Hollywood actress who knows firsthand what it's like to be terrorized by a real-life stalker. I'm an actress. You probably don't know my name, but you may know some of my credits. I started off doing the Halloween movies, Halloween 4 and 5. I always played the bad girl. I've been receiving fan mail since I was a kid. Nothing ever really odd. And just, I'm your biggest fan and send me your picture and that kind of thing. Then one fan took it too far and he began stalking me. He just sent more fan mails, three, four hundred of them. He became obsessed. He started getting mad at me for changing the way that I looked. When I was on Roseanne, I cut my hair for a role and he didn't like that. The letters started getting really violent and sexually graphic. I want the old Danielle back, the fine slut. Only I should have the right to kiss you. If I didn't do what he wanted me to do, that he was going to kill me, he would talk about where he wanted to stick a knife inside of me. I wanted to cut me up into little pieces. You feel raped. You feel totally vulnerable. My home phone rang one morning, and my mother answered the phone, and I said, what, what's going on? And she mouthed to me, someone's trying to kill you. And it was Houston police saying that there's this this man who was coming to get me and bring me back with him. I was scared for my life. The day I knew he was gonna be coming to my house, he came to my house three times before the police got there. Six cop cars pulled up right outside and they arrested him. He came to my house with a teddy bear in the back of the car and a, a shotgun and a nine millimeter. He was brought in and questioned and escorted back to Texas. I talked to the police, I said, how can I keep him away so I know I'm safe? And they said, you have to get him a restraining order I had a restraining order for a year, from my birthday to my birthday. The day after the restraining order had expired, before the other one had gone into effect, he sent flowers to my new address, saying, I love you, happy birthday. And I went, oh, here we go. I just didn't think that it would happen again. I got a few letters over the years. The last letter I received from him was saying that he wanted my forgiveness because he never meant to scare me. And I've definitely changed the way that I do things. I don't have a bill in my name. I look over my shoulder all the time. If I pull up to my house and there's a random car, I won't get out of my car. When I do travel, I travel under different names. I know how to fight and know how to use weapons, and I'm very aware of my surroundings. I've learned to trust my instincts. I know when something isn't right. If you feel like something's wrong, something is most likely wrong. Well, I'm so glad you're here to talk about this. Do you worry about it the more and more that you're out there? I do. Uh, the last time he contacted me was when I was on a, a series, and he sent fan mail to the production office. Mm -hmm. And then I was kind of under the radar for a while, but I'm getting ready to do another big movie, right. and I'm afraid it's going gonna, it's gonna to start right back up again. He wrote you lots of letters, most of them incredibly vile, really kind of very morbid mm -hmm. sort of things. What were you thinking about when we were talking about what was going on down here with this story with Jay-Z and Katrina? If I saw my stalker or even, and, you know, if I was getting 200 emails a day, even just what I've had happen to me, I would run the other way. What you're doing isn't going to make him want you. It's going to, it's the exact opposite. It's actually what's happening. You've made him scared of you. It's just not, not going to happen. Because at the time this was at its peak with you, you moved, you mm -hmm. were, I mean, you were really scared about this. Absolutely, and, and I was a child, I was 18, so I still didn't quite understand the depths of what was, what the possibilities were. And, uh, and then I moved and, and it just keep, it kept happening over and over again and, and until he finally sort of disappeared for now. But I'm waiting every day, I get, you know, I'm starting to do press stuff and I get fan letters and I'm looking for his handwriting. What would you say to her as somebody that's been on the other end of what she's doing? What would you say to Katrina? You're a beautiful, articulate girl that has so much, so many opportunities, and you're wasting your time, and you're directing your energy in the wrong way. You're making him afraid of you. If you're his biggest fan, leave him alone and be happy for him that he is with someone that it seems like he might be in love with, and go find yourself someone that loves you as much as you say you love Jay-Z. Nothing left for me to say. <laughs> we'll be right back. Talking about here. 
Michelle, do you realize that you're at risk? There are good sides to who he is, and he may be able to redeem himself and, and resolve these, these beliefs and expectancies of compliance and possession. But until he does that, you've got to find the strength to shut this off. Do you, do you agree with that? Yes, I do agree. I mean, you've, you've got to stop that. And this is a good test for him. He says, oh, I'm better. If that's what she said, I would respect that. You need to just try that out and see. You need to give that unambiguous message. You could wind up dead, and it's a miracle you aren't. It's a miracle you aren't, in, in my opinion. You agree? Absolutely. It really is. Think of your children. What would they do without a mother? That's the whole point. You're putting your children's mother at risk. Rhonda Saunders, thank you for being here and thank talking you. about all of this. And Melvin, I hope you've been listening. I absolutely wish you the best. I hope you will get some help, and I hope you'll get this behind you so you can have a healthy relationship. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Melvin. Danielle Harris can be seen in the upcoming remake of the classic horror film Halloween and the movie Left for Dead. So... <laughs> something a little more sunshine in it, isn't it? All right, if you know someone who is being stalked.